Hello, my soccer universe. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's I have such a weird condition at the moment that I am up for a little bit and then I can go sleep almost immediately. Uh, must have come down with some sort of infection. It's weird. It's tell it's everything. But you know, as I said yesterday, show must go on. I'm gonna do this video since I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. And honestly, that's the other thing. I uh, watched yesterday the last game. Then I more or less went to bed afterwards. And I hope that I have recorded the highlights. Then I recorded the wrong show. They had uh, here on Sky Sports Austria, they have like a full one hour where they show all the goals, but they don't repeat it. <laughs> and so I just saw the, high, the analysis and highlights of the uh, games that where Austrian teams were involved and in maybe the, how they call it, the complementary games. And yeah. I looked for a few on YouTube and that was basically it. So, um, Let's see, as I said, let's watch, I mean, uh, let I go through the games, I will start in the conference league because there Lask is playing, as I'm wearing Roma, you already know Lask has not won, they played a draw, should have won. I've, as for wardrobe choice, <laughs> I will always play Lask if they have won or if they quali qualified, otherwise I go for the other favorite teams in there, which is Roma, who fortunately have won. And Pauk, or you know, in the, in the conference league there are not too many, I mean, maybe Frankfurt, yeah. Let's see. In, 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 in any case, the Lusk game was really, really a uh, good performance by Lusk for most of the time, especially in the first half. And they got the early, the early goal uh, through Horvath uh, after Schmidt already hit the post and he kind of dusted off, was very pre pre present. Schmidt himself, and then afterwards, alone on to, on, on, on to goal, but the first touch was so heavy that he couldn't then lob, lob the goal or whatever. It should have been 2-0 after 15. Yes, Maccabi had more of the game uh, in term, terms of possession, but in terms of chances, they were almost non-existent. I think there was one in the first, first half, and last had two or three really more good ones. Second half, game was a even bit more even. However, I still thought they were the best chances. The Lagush came on. A uh, great save by by the goal and even on the rebound, the uh, the defenders cleared well. But given that Maccabi barely had any chances, I thought, yeah, well, maybe they might just see out that one 0 win, which would have been perfect. Alas, yeah, laid on. Uh, they were just, I, I I don't know, they were not present and conceded a really stupid equalizer in a way uh, with, with not defending properly. And then Avakabi uh, had two more chances. I won't call those big, 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 big chances. And I got I to gotta say, this is definitely two points lost. With that win, you would have had control over the group, which in a way you still have, but not for first place, because Alash kept losing at home to Helsinki, who, Lask fans, were so upset that Lask played pink in Hels Helsinki. Well, uh, Helsinki also played in pink. Yes, maybe they're not by... Uh, supported by a sponsor who has pink as a main color and kind of demands to be played. I understand that, but I found that at least uh, interesting. So uh, the group is uh, now that Lask and Maccabi have each four points. Helsinki won at Alashkert. Lask is playing Alashkert, so you need to get six points and then it looks pretty good. Uh, however, it's also a also group where I think you need to win all the games against Alashkert. Um, I think whoever and then it's against each other that will decide it. But I would say Lask and Maccabi look to be the strongest teams. Um, of the other, I just notable results from the Conference League. Roma against Luhansk was for uh, was a rather even game from what I could gather from the husband. El Sharavi gave Roma an, ear an early lead, but it was not so uh a co convincing however in the second half roma then uh, turned it on uh saniola come on team tammy abraham came came on almost immediately uh this pay paid off with uh chris smalling in the 66 and then tammy abraham in 68 putting a game out of um you know towards roma that was very much in the balance up until that point and the roma definitely one team that is uh you should note for this car competition, after all, it is Mourinho um, in there as well. Um, Feyenoord, 2-1 uh, against Slavia, yeah, Pauk against Slovan, 1-1, uh, Slovan, uh, one, one. it's uh, rather disappointing, I have to say. I was actually hoping for a Pauk win there. Uh, another notable shot, Spurs 5-1 against Mura. Uh, Kane came on in the 60th and then scores a hat-trick, of although it was 2-1 already for 
uh, Spurs at, at, at the moment. So it's basically an empty hat trick. But you know, for a goal scorer, maybe this gets going uh, way more important was the away win for uh, by Ren at Vitesse because that actually uh, moves now. Ren is in a stronger position over Vitesse uh, there. That was it, what I want to say from the Conference League. I mean, Europa League wise. Uh, maybe the last uh, thing is that, of course, Roma and Spurs still remain the top favorites there, but you'll see this then in the stats cast, which uh, we'll post around the same time as uh, this video does. So just look look at my, my channel. Uh, for the Europa League, I actually saw a whole lot more, and I have to say the Europa League uh, in this new format with only eight, eight groups, there is quite some attractive... Uh, stuff in, in in there. To me, probably the best uh, game, at least name-wise, was Real Sociedad against Monaco, um, where I actually think that um, Real Sociedad, especially in the second half, had the better of the game from all that I could tell. Uh, Monaco held a 1-0 lead, but uh, Miguel Merino, after a corner, equalizes, um, and then they had the better, better chance, but just couldn't break down Mo Monaco. So, um, it's a group where whoever plays against Sturm so far has won, which is Monaco and PSV. Talk about uh, PSV in, in a uh, second. But uh, Real Sociedad hasn't had it going. So it's a very open group, but it seems that last place is decided. Because Sturm Graz, uh, with all that they're doing great in the league at, 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 at the moment, they a little bit have too much respect of their opponents, it seems, in Europe. Because the first half, they did not concentrate on their own strengths, which is a very direct game. Um, did not happen this time around. Uh, and then, uh, you know, PSV only scored one of one goal in the first half. Very, very, very clearly, the, uh, there they were much more um, the better team. Uh, Sangare with a very uh, nonchalant flick. Uh, make, make it 1-0. However, in the second half, Sturm came out and actually put pressure on PSV. However, they were then opened themselves up in defense and there they paid. Zahavi, after a nice guts across, make mix and then Sturm finally gets on, on the scoring sheet and had a few chances. And like I say, when they made the goal up until 20 minutes later, the game was in the balance and Sturm had many chances there where if they make the goal, and I have to say, amazing support for Sturm Graz, which is something uh, with last play in Klagenfurt, I feel a little bit... Um, uh, yeah, hard down by. New stadium is, is starting being built in Linz uh, next week, so uh, very happy about that. But then PSV was just ruthless. Uh, Max and Vitessen within five minutes decided the game. 4-1 for PSV, probably too high. The shockers of the evening came all in the Leicester Napoli. Napoli group where both city teams lose. Leicester lose to Legia. That was weird, but I think even more remarkable was a 2-3 loss at home from uh, by Napoli to Spartak. A Spartak team that many observers said they are so much in disarray that they should actually have no, uh, that they will not pick, pick up any, any points. And after one minute, Napoli had had, had lead through Elmas uh, with some slapstick goal uh, um, defending. Napoli had chances, but didn't take, take, take them. And the Mario Rui sent off uh, by a uh, tripping in the 30th minute. And that cost Na Na Napoli, who, who, who were still in the game. But in the second half, Quincy Promise gave then um, Spartak an equalizer. And then um, Napoli even got the lead, but there was a foul in the build-up. So that did, did, didn't count. And then um, uh, Ignatov in the 80th, 80, 80, 80th makes it 2-1 for Spartak. Quincy Promise adds a 30 and 90th and Oshiman way too late pulls one back. Kind of a big loss. Because, you know, Lega is six points, Napoli is only one. Uh, it might be that the, one of the big teams only can go for second place. Which means then they have to play against the Champions League opponent in the playoff round. So, rather, rather interesting. Uh, Frankfurt get their first win of the season with a last-minute penal penalty. Maybe that gets things rolling now for, Fra for, for Frankfurt. But it's also awesome. It's they're very well in contention in that group. Uh, Marseille Galatasaray was marred uh, by fan with us uh, throwing flares at each other. And the game had to be halted. So not so beautiful scenes there. Celtic against Le Leverkusen. I saw the highlights of that game. It, sees, it reads 4-0 win for Leverkusen. And you think this must have been Le Leverkusen rolling over Celtic. Everything but... This was a game where Celtic could have easily scored three to four goals. Yes, Le Leverkusen had also chances, but uh, I think this Japanese guy, he should have had a hat-trick against uh, Leverkusen. But the goalie uh, <laughs> uh, 
uh, and so in the end it becomes a very, uh, with just being ruthless, a very nasty scoreline for Celtic. Um, Ferenc Varos against Real Betis, almost a similar story with Betis just um, being not, uh, relentless. I mean, Fekir uh, gives them the lead. Uh, it was 1-1 at the half, and then when they turned on the right, I mean, it was an own goal in 76, and very late on, Teo gives Betis uh, deserve it. Uh, win Zagreb wins 3 0 at the Genk, which was also not that surprised. But then I hear that uh, Zagreb have never conceded a goal on Belgian soil. That is a pretty remarkable statistic, I, I, I gotta say. However, two, uh, the, the second and the third goal came by pen penalties. And if you haven't seen them, those Petkovic penalties, the way he just, I mean, it's not even walking, it's, it's a very slow pace how he gets it up there. So, very, very uh, weird. But it makes a 3 0 uh, win there. And then, of course, we have to talk West Ham against Rapid. Uh, where, yeah, what shall I say? <laughs> West Ham, uh, as long as they controlled Rapid for 60 minutes, the game was never a contest. And Declan Rice had them a very, very deserved lead. Then suddenly a penalty would, would, would have been called, which I totally agree was not a penalty. So uh, they took that off. Uh, then, very late on, I think. Um, Ben Rama makes it 2 0. It probably that was the fair result. I mean, Rapid, had, they, they, they were also saying they had a very nice fighting performance, but in the end, it's just no, 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 no. The physicality of um, West Ham is just too much for uh, an Austrian team like Rapid to handle, who have now five losses in a row. That is a balance that you don't hear very often coming from a Rapid. In addition, they are now the losingest team in the Europa League. No other team has lost as many games as Rapid. No other team has even lost the first two games as often as Rapid has done in the Europa League. Yes, they are regular in the Europa League and probably one of the most uh, frequently present teams there. Which I'm not sure is if that's a positive uh, for a storage club like Rapid. So, not so sure about that. But yeah, those were is what I could tell from yesterday's evening. I still have some energy. <laughs> uh, please let, let, let me know what you thought about uh, what was happening. Yeah, yes, I, found, I find both competitions very nice. I just wish um, it was not all on one day. I have said maybe on Tuesday at the 7 o'clock you should put the uh, Conference League a few games. Then have on Wednesday an early slot you put a half slate of the um, uh, Europa League and then you have a mixture Conference League Europa League on Thursday and leave the late slots on, on Tuesday and Wednesday for the Champions League. I think this would lighten the load a little bit and also, um, you know, to me the spotlight is too much on the Champions League. The Champions League is like wonderful, it's the best com 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 competition. But having then those two uh, kind of as a size, as an, especially Europa League, like, really would deserve a little bit more spotlight. So uh, that that's why I think it should go kind of, you know, even it out and have the uh, same amount of games each day uh, also would make my review. Then I would probably make three re reviews. Yeah, who knows what I, I would do. Any case, I would like to hear again from you on the Europa and Europa Conference League. I think two really nice competitions in terms of enjoyed this video subscribe to my ch uh, channel if you want to see more and yeah i'll talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day